Okay, right. Well, this is an experimental topic, so you really need to have a pretty good knowledge of how Bryce works. What we're going to do is look at simulating light scattering absorption in Bryce. Now, Bryce doesn't have any inbuilt subsurface scattering control, so we're going to have to build it up from scratch. It's going to use premium effects. In fact, I'm going to set the render options now. So render options, you'll need premium effects. Set the rays per pixel down to 4 for previewing. We'll use blurry transmissions to get our scattering and maximum ray depth. We'll be thinking about that because we're going to have to use multiple layers to achieve the absorption. So we'll start off just leaving it at 6. I'm going to modify the document setup and reduce the size of the render because with this being premium effects and we're going to be using transparency and scattering it's going to be quite slow to render compared to just regular rendering at least. Um, think in terms of true ambient rendering this is going to be that sort of time scale. Okay so I'll just check out of that and the next thing I'm going to do is in the sky and fog I'm going to turn the atmosphere off set it to fully black go into the sky and fog menu and the sky lab here I'm going to check the shadow intensity is at 100 that's very important and disable the sunlight. So at this point I can bring in my model. I'm going to use one of Rashad's additional primitives. Here we go. I'll use the round edged cube. Check out of that. So that's my model. We're not going for anything sophisticated at the moment. We're going for quite a simple scene here. And the, the concepts will apply to more complex objects but there are other considerations yet as you will soon learn. So the material for the model, I'm going to set it to the default grey and then get rid of the diffusion. So it's got no diffusion ambient specularity. In fact, the only thing I'm going to give it is transparency at 100% and holding the Alt key down while clicking on the specular halo color swatch, I'm going to the HLS control here so I can modify the luminance value for the specular halo. This value controls the level of blur. Maximum value gives the maximum level of blur. So when the light transmits through the transparent surface, its direction, its ray path, will be randomly diverted by, because we've got this set at fully white, a large, a potentially large random amount. It might not be large, but having the largest uh, value there gives us the largest chance of the widest de deviation. Uh, if the specular sets down smaller, then the deviations will randomly on average be smaller. So you can see this is going to divert the ray path. Now as things stand you won't see anything at all. However if I change the colour of the atmosphere I'll just make it green the cube becomes visible because a certain percentage of the light will get diverted on the ray path and see the sky. Uh, there is some, it's not an even covering of green because these rays close to the ground here are more likely to get diverted and hit the ground than the ones close to the top of the cube. And at this point I can show you the, the focusing effect of modifying the specular halo. So if I just drop it down a bit, even a bit will make a lot of difference to the level of scattering. You can see now, because the ray path is not getting modified as much or in the, in the greatest range, that you get a greater gradient here where these have got more chance of seeing the sky and those have got more chance of seeing the ground. So there is that. Now you don't just have to use the sky color for this, you could also use, if I set that fully black, go into the Skylab, image based lighting, use HDR image and I'll load in one of Horro's HDRIs, this Rosen Pass, and I'm going to use uh, quality, set it down to the lowest value, no specularity, no HDRI effect, only the intensity of it as an image added to the black sky. So just using the image here and that can also be used to create this effect. So you can see that this gives a, a, a more of a variation in lighting depending on the variation in lighting of the HDRI backdrop. Okay, right. So at the moment we're just using the HDRI image to, or whatever environmental light there is, that's being scattered and picked up on this surface. What we could introduce is some response to either diffusion or specularity. Well, we'll start with diffusion, there you go. We'll also need a diffuse light source to get this to work. So we'll give it 100 diffusion as an as a opening gambit here. We'll check what value our specular halo and take it back up to 255. So we've got maximum scatter. And then I'll create a radial light source, which I shall place, there's my camera, behind the object. So we're, we're interested in the light getting transmitted through the object. The preview is not, in this case, very helpful, although you can turn it on to accurate rendering. You might find, if you've got a complex scene, it'll start slowing Bryce down in the main viewport while it uh, does that. So there you go, we've got our light source behind 
and the diffuse light is lighting the far sides of the cube and getting scattered the views getting scattered but it's just uh, you know looks very flat and not very realistic we've got some input from the outside world as well the environment light of the HDR backdrop I suppose what I should do is isolate that so we're just looking at one thing at once so I'll set the intensity to zero and you can just see the effect of the light source okay right now this line here the shadow area and then this light area is due to the fact that the light's traveling through and depending on the angle of the face depends how much it gets lit this is the diffuse lighting model I mean this, this has created all kinds of problems in different areas like if you wanted to put a light source over your scene that evenly lit your scene and projected an image onto your scene it's very difficult because you have to start modifying the light as it goes over distance because as you look at the horizon your angle is getting a lot shallower compared with the light source so it tends to get uh, darker towards the horizon if you've got a light source close to you and this is a similar effect here now I'm explaining this really very badly is the fact that there's a peculiar light uh, line occurring along this edge because this inside edge is also getting lit because of the transparency of the material and another problem is we've got no shadow so it doesn't look very realistic so to give it a shadow well, we could experiment with refraction but that introduces reflection and it also is going to slow things down so if we stick with 100 and reduce the transparency instead we'll still remain fairly render efficient because we're not really that worried about refraction effects so now we've got some light going through we've still got this odd edge angle and it's looking a bit dark but you can see at least we've got a shadow for our shape so that makes it look more realistic so I'm going to edit the light source and take the intensity of both the specular and the diffuse up to 100 check out of that and we'll render that now and see where we are okay this line is still bothering me and the solution that I've come for this is to switch from diffuse lighting to specular lighting now if we have a maximum value for the specular halo you get a very hard edge specular highlight so we need to reduce this value a bit so you get a softer edge either uh, 254 or 253 we'll try 253 the advantage of this is that the specular doesn't use the same model as um, the fuse so you you get a different effect on this surface which looks a little bit more natural with this scattering effect I'm going to lower the light source again so you can see the hard edge there is not so pronounced this is uh, come from the specular component so I'll just tip that light source down to get rid of that very bright edge there okay so you can see that this effect is only going to work within certain limitations now the other thing we're missing here is any absorption we've got no sense of that this is an opaque material where the light's getting through more at the edges than it is in the solid body so what we could do with this is if I copy and paste this object not the light source not the light source stick that right copy and paste the object and then shrink it a bit I'll get some absorption so and the level of absorption will be dependent on the size of the object now obviously this is fine with an object like this which is all convex but if you have more complex geometry you're gonna to have to use wings or some other modeler to create inner shells uh, so and the other thing is you can see there's a rather hard edge this is this is being caused by the shadow cast by the inner object on the inside of the outer object so there's no opportunity for that to scatter so we have to scatter the shadow you can do that by creating soft shadows which is easy enough we set the soft shadows up but remember you won't see sh soft shadows yet unless you set the soft shadows control in the premium effects that that has to be set as well as the soft shadows in your light sources same counts for the Sun so that helps get rid of that effect and now we've got our absorber in there it's starting to look a bit more like what, what, what the effect we're aiming for so now it becomes a question of how much do we want to absorb and over what distance because you can see if I've made that a bit smaller there's sort of obviously something inside there but if I modify the material of absor the absorber and may say make it 90% transparent you'll get more light through it okay but then you could add other copies of itself inside itself at different levels and that will give you progressive absorption so I won't get the outside of the ship I want to get this other inside one I'll copy and paste those control control C control V and place several layers stacked inside so the fact that there's all these layers is going to 
increase the render time, but you can see you're getting progressive absorption through this object. And the level of absorption, probably a good idea to get hold of those and apply their own layer to them, a colour family group to them, like um, so. You can control by the level of transparency you set. And the, the light will continue going through these up until the point it reaches the maximum ray depth, which is why I said we'll be thinking about that, because the maximum ray depth is, um, if it's turned down, will mean you only get through so many layers and then it'll go fully black. So if I turn this down to 2, for example, the middle should look a lot darker because the ray doesn't get all the way through the object. That's that's the idea behind that. So I'll just turn that back up for better effect. Uh, for for fine-tuning, take it up and down and see where, you, where adding no more ray depths in, improves your render and just stop there. OK, so we've sort of got that effect working. It doesn't look marvellous, to be fair, but it, it's sort of working. You can see we're getting some light here, and this is from, from the ground, probably. We've got some shadow from the thing that's uh, softened. Um, the transparency is, of course, an issue. It'd be nice to be able to control uh, the scattering with, with more independent controls, but unfortunately we can't do that, so we're left with uh, jig jiggling around the, the controls we have. Right, so let's bring back our HDRI backdrop. So we'll add that in. See if, what effect that has on the, uh, the scene. So I've got a bit more colour in there. Indeed, we could modify the outer material and change the specular highlight colour to change the apparent colour of our object, which might work nice. But don't forget, the absorbers are also contributing to the effect. So we can we can modify these. I mean, we may not want them to have a specular response. We could just use them as absorbers, which would make them appear darker, and they wouldn't be contributing to the surface effect. There's there's a lot of uh, control we have here, just working with these inner and outer surfaces, as you can see, and and depending on whether or not they respond to the light source, either diffuse or the ambient. If this was too dark, you could add a bit of ambient in there to fill the light out to make out that light was getting all the way through the object, if, if you reach the maximum ray depth, for example. And um, essentially, what you're trying to do is fine-tune this so it actually looks like a real-world material. At the moment, because of the noisiness of it, and it, it lacks... Uh, it, it, there's, a, there's a lighting environment. It doesn't look particularly like a plastic. So if we were to take the outer material and modify it so maybe we give it um, 10 reflection. Reflection works very well with HDRI backdrops because they're so intense. We could get a bit of a highlight on this edge and it would make it look plasticky. The, the true test is going to be how it looks though when we give it um, more rays per pixel. Let's try 64 rays per pixel. See what the render time is there. Now it's a couple of minutes. Like I say, it's, it does tend to be slow. We might be able to reduce that and not lose too much effect by lowering the maximum ray depth, but that may make it a bit darker in the middle. But that might be suitable, I don't know. Now we're at 2 minutes 19, so it wasn't having too much effect. Okay, so there you go. That's a, a, a sort of an introduction to simulating subsurface scattering in Bryce. Um, it, it's an involved topic and there's still quite a lot of experimentation to do, but the, the, the fact that it's quite render intensive means that it makes experimenting with it quite hard work. Even now, you can see it's 64 raised pixel. There's a lot of noise in this surface, uh, which, which isn't necessarily good, and it, the surfaces are a bit plain, so it will probably benefit from introducing reflection on the ground. And you could do this trick where you introduce a lot of reflection on the ground and set the metallicity to uh, set the diffusion to fully black, give it metallicity, and that creates quite a nice reflective surface that you can then use. I don't know. Let's give the reflection. I don't know, fifteen. Let's try fifteen to add some reflections between into reflections between the surfaces, which add a bit more interest to these. Um, plain areas, but then again it'll increase the render time, there you go, the render time's gone up, because of the additional inter-reflections, but you, you, you can see it's, it's a bit more interesting to look at, even though it's a very basic scene. I think to get rid of the noise I'm going to have to select uh, maximum rays per pixel, so let's see how that looks, I'll make this the final render, and uh, you'll see it at the beginning of the video, or you will have seen it hopefully, so you can see that's going to take 8 minutes, so there you go, that's the end of uh, this rather long-winded and difficult introduction to simulating light scattering 
and light absorption in Bryce. Oh well, I hope you found that interesting and that you'll have a go at experimenting with this effect in your own renders.